Hello everybody. It is Friday afternoon and I want to say what date is it? Maybe the 21st? 20? Yeah, I think it is the 21st. You will be seeing this tomorrow, which is Saturday morning, the 22nd. I wanted to come on and give you all a quick update on how Ray is doing and uh, what we've been up to over the past uh, couple of weeks. But more than that, I wanted to come on and thank each and every one of you because the outpouring that this family, my family, has received from all of you subscribers is mind-blowing. Just looking at the comment section, there was over 12,000 comments where people are either praying for us, giving us well wishes, thinking of us, sending us positive energy, sending us healing, sending us strength. And it is so, so humbling. And I need for each and every one of you to know that I feel it. We feel it. We feel the outpouring that all of you subscribers are sending to us and we need it and it has helped. Um, gosh, I, I just, I don't even, I, I, I don't even feel like I have the right words to thank you all enough because I didn't expect what we have received. I, I really, it gives me faith in the world. It renews my faith in the world. And I, I feel that I am the luckiest person to have the subscriber base that I have and to have all of you subscribers following and thinking about us and praying for us daily. You know, sending us strength and positivity because you know, over this last few weeks, our lives have been up and down. And right now we're trying to find a calm in this storm. And um, your thoughts and well wishes and prayers are definitely helping us. And so um, I'm gonna be selfish and I'm gonna say, um, please continue them because we need it. This is a rough road that we're on, a new chapter of our lives that we're starting, and there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of unknown, and um, there's scared feelings that we have, you know? And there are days when I'm having a really bad day and I will see a comment from a subscriber who just watched my first vlog about this and it picks me up and that it helps more than you will ever know. And so with that being said, um, I first wanna to touch on Ray because he is the important one in this. Um, wow, he is an amazing human being. My son is. Um, he is strong and he's capable. I don't even know if that's the right word. I, I'm in awe of Ray and the strength that he is exhibiting through this journey. And um, he is staying composed, he is staying rational, and he is staying in the moment. And when I see him doing all of that, it makes me tearful and it makes me cry because I am in awe of my son. I, I don't know that I would be as strong as he is going through what he's going through, being faced with what he's been facing. And he's an incredible human being and I am so thankful he's mine. Um, it's been um, a bit rough since the last vlog because not a lot of testing had gotten done. And um, I will say that that was very frustrating on our end because um, 
The holdup wasn't the doctor's office, absolutely not. His doctor is amazing. The nursing staff, the hospital staff at City of Hope is amazing. The frustrating part is dealing with the insurance company. Hold on, Winnie is sniffing and I'm afraid she needs to go to the bathroom so I'm gonna let her out. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, um, it's dealing with the insurance company. Now Ray, um, because of his job, has really great insurance. And um, we thought that it would be smooth sailing. You know, we didn't think that we were gonna run into any problems with the insurance approving anything. We didn't even know that there were things like a PET scan that had to be approved. We figured that if the doctor ordered it, it would just get done and the insurance would pay for it. And that could be my naive, um, my naiveness, I guess, if that's even a word, because we've never, I guess, had to utilize our insurance in the aspect that we're utilizing it now. And so, um, the insurance from the date that the PET scan was requested, and it was requested stat, um, informed us that they had until the 18th, which was just the other day, to approve or deny the scan. And to me, that is very frustrating. That is no disrespect to anybody, but I cannot, for the life of me, comprehend how there would be any question about whether or not a PET scan is needed for anybody that was just diagnosed definitively with cancer. My son was definitively diagnosed with gastric cancer because of the biopsy that was taken in his cardia, which is the lower part of his esophagus. Now, with that being said, how can the insurance even question if he needs a PET scan so we can then see if it has metastasized anywhere else besides what was found on the liver? Now, a mass was found on Ray's liver, but it was not definitively diagnosed as cancer. That was the prognosis based on where the gastric cancer was in his cardia. The path for it to metastasize would then be the path going to the liver. So it was an educated guess that that would be cancer but it took forever to get the approval for that biopsy. It took forever to get the approval for the PET scan and it took forever to get the approval for his port. The minute it was approved on the 18th, the insurance took the full three weeks to approve this. His doctor had him in the next day and we got, we had um, three tests done, which was yesterday. We had um, his biopsy, the liver biopsy done yesterday morning at eight o'clock. That took about four and a half to five hours. He got there at 7.30, he didn't leave until 12.30 and we couldn't go in with him. So um, yeah, we couldn't go in with him. Um, then he had to have more blood work done because um, his potassium, for whatever reason, skyrocketed and was dangerously high. And so uh, Doc gave him a liquid medicine that he had to take and then he had to get his blood work done, I guess two days later, to see if the potassium had dropped, which it had. It went from 5.6 to 4.2. Not sure why his potassium spiked. We hadn't changed his diet. He wasn't eating more potassium. In fact, he was eating less sugar because of the diet that we have chosen for Ray and I will get into that in a second. But then um, after we got his blood work done, then we had to wait for the PET scan and the PET scan was supposed to happen at five, but luckily um, they had an opening early that day. So they called and Ray was able to get in at two o'clock. Um, so we got all of that done yesterday and it is Friday and we are waiting for the PET scan results to see what exactly if it has gone anywhere else. Um, Ray has had in the last couple weeks an ultrasound done of his 
lower extremities, if that makes any sense, the reproductive part of his extremities. I'm trying to word this eloquently because they were afraid that because of how low in his esophagus the cancer was, that it could have been a what they call a germ cell cancer, which comes from the reproductive organs. But um, luckily, we found out that that ultrasound came back clear. So it is, in fact, just the gastric cancer caused by acid reflux. And we are now, again, waiting for the PET scan results and the pathology from that tumor on his liver and just overall if there was cancer found anywhere else in his body. And so, um, my hope and who hopes for this but at this point you know my hope is just that what I really hope is just that the mass on his liver is the same as my mass and it was I have several of them on my liver that are genetic from my mom that are just vascular benign clumps of nothing and so um, that would be the ultimate scenario but I'm not gonna fool myself chances are it is cancer and so I have prepared myself that Ray has cancer in his esophagus and his liver and I am hoping that it is just nowhere else um, and that's kind of where we're at I wish I had more information um, but the good news is it's not in his lower extremities so that was the first piece of good news that we've gotten and I'm gonna take that as a win and a step in the right direction um, but as soon as they get back the biopsy and the PET scan then Ray's doctor works with what they call a tumor board at City of Hope it is um, a group of oncologists that work together that decide on a treatment for Ray and so um, it does sound like he is getting his port in next week and it'll be up here in his chest. And it does sound like Ray was wanting to opt out of that and just do an IV every time. But it sounds like if he does get the port that there is a medication that they can, the chemo that they can actually attach to it and Ray can go home with it for six hours and then come back six hours later versus waiting in the hospital for the six hours of the chemo to empty out into his system. And so I think, you know, that that's probably beneficial and probably gonna be more comfortable for Ray to be at home versus sitting in a hospital. Um, yeah, and that's, <clears throat> that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we are five weeks in and treatment hasn't started, but my hope is that within the next week, um, it will. We have chosen since day two, day two after uh, Ray got diagnosed, we decided that uh, we were going to change his diet. And um, so with that, Ray did a cleanse to cleanse out his body of all of the toxins. And then once the cleanse ended, we decided to go with an all organic diet and no sugar added and keep his sugar intake as low as we possibly could and we are excluding um, red meats from his diet we're going to just tr try and stick with the leaner meats like chicken but keep that very minimal um, we had originally entertained i guess the idea of doing a vegan plant-based diet because upon our research and our research only, this is not based off of advice from anybody, um, just people that we know that work in oncology, they have said that people that are on a vegan diet and do kind of an intermittent fasting before their chemo treatment, they tend to not have as bad as side effects from it. But with that being said, Ray is very low in weight. He weighs, he is six foot and 130 pounds right now. We have managed to get six pounds on him even after the cleanse. 
I don't feel like Ray has any weight to lose. And it is very, very difficult on a vegan diet to get him the nutrients and the calories and the protein that is needed to put weight on Ray and to get him strong. And so for that reason, we opted out of the vegan plant-based and just decided to go the organic route where there are no pesticides, there is no preservatives, and um, no sugar added diet with, again, the no red meats. Um, now, I know that eating sugar is not going to stop the cancer, but it's funny because Kayla worded it very wisely the other day when uh, we were questioned about it and she, her analogy was pretty amazing. She said, when there's a fire, you're not gonna add fuel to the fire to help it burn. You're not gonna add lighter fluid to it to ignite it more. And so um, based again off of our research and our research alone, um, cancer thrives off of sugar. It feeds off of sugar and it feeds off of acidity. And so um, our mindset is if we cut sugar out of Ray's diet, maybe it's just not going to feed it enough to continue growing. And um, it will help, it will maybe make it weaker. You know, that could be my naive and wishful thinking, but based on our research, a lot of people who have been successful with the chemo and getting past the cancer changed their diet to the diet that we're doing for Ray. And so um, right now it really is just about keeping Ray as strong and healthy as we can. Um, I do wanna tell you that Ray is not sick right now. Other than being extremely skinny and underweight, and that is purely caused from the tumor that is in his esophagus. That tumor, when he would eat, it hurt him to eat. So subconsciously, Ray then started not having an appetite because it hurt to eat. You know, you know that happens when something hurts, you just kind of don't want to eat because you know it's going to hurt. And that was where Ray had lost about 13 to 15 pounds that brought him down to the weight he's at right now. Um, but he is not sick. He um, is tired and um, that is about the only symptom right now that we or that he is seeing that or he is experiencing that we are seeing but um, I think that also him being tired is a lot of the emotional journey that he's on right now I feel like it is emotionally draining for all of us and I can only imagine what it is for Ray and how much it's taking out of him um, Jeff, my ex-husband, was able to get Ray a mentor um, that Ray can talk to and can call and text. And this mentor has had the same cancer that Ray has and survived it. So this is somebody that Ray can talk to about what he's feeling, what he's thinking, what his fears are. Um, if he has any questions about things, this mentor is somebody that Ray can go to. And for that, um, I am so, 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 so thankful that Ray has somebody safe that he can go talk to. And when I say safe, I say safe because Ray fears, I think, talking to me because he doesn't want to scare me or instill more fear in me. And so I feel like there are things that Ray is guarded about. And I would, I'm i sure that his fears he's afraid are going to make me feel helpless because I can't take those fears away. And um, just as I feel, I don't want to tell Ray my fears because I don't want to add that to Ray and I want to be strong for Ray. And so 
I am so, so thankful that Jeff was able to get a mentor through the fire department for Ray. That is probably one of um, the best things that has happened in this so far for Ray. A tool that I think is invaluable. Um, I personally have started to talk to um, a therapist. The, my therapist that I used when Jeff and I went to marriage counseling because she was so amazing and she was open to helping me through this journey and guiding me because I don't, there are things that I don't know how to handle when it comes to Allison asking specific questions and I don't know how to answer them and I don't wanna lie to her and I don't want to instill false hope or or no hope and so I want to be honest with her but I'm not sure if honesty is right and how to be honest and what words to use and I want to be there for Kayla and I want to make sure that Kayla isn't taking too much on but I know that Kayla feels like she needs to help because she feels helpless so helping me and helping Ray gives Kayla the sense of helping and being valued and she is a rock Kayla is a freaking rock I couldn't get through this without her. I couldn't be happier that she is the person by my side and I know she's happy that I'm the person by her side. And there's not a decision that has been made in this journey that Ray, Kayla, and I do not talk about and agree on together. And that's kind of how we're doing this. And. I'm not gonna say that I don't have breaking points and that I'm not completely exhausted because I am. And so right now it's just trying to get through what a good friend of mine, Jay, in Utah described it as. He described this as the fact-finding phase of this journey and I don't think it could have been worded any better and you know you you have all these tests and your whole body just tightens up because you're waiting for the answers you know and, and you don't want any more bad news and you just you just don't want any more bad news and I will be glad when the fact finding phase of this is over and we have all of the facts, we have the big picture and we know what we're looking at exactly. Um, I'm thankful for the fact finding phase of this because Ray's oncologist is amazing. He calls Ray every stinking day and if he doesn't call Ray, his nurse is calling Ray and he is sending Ray in at least once a week for blood work, if not twice, because he is staying on top of this. Ray's GI doctor that works with his oncologist is checking in with Ray, and they are assuring us that no stone will go left unturned, that they are going to do everything in their power for Ray. And, um, I'm thankful for that. I'm ready to start treatment for Ray. I'm ready to get on that road and um, the road to what I'm gonna call his healing, the road to Ray beating this cancer. And that's what I'm ready for. And so I'll ask each and every one of you, whatever your belief system is, whatever higher power you believe in, Whatever your means is of sending strength and healing and positivity our way, please keep it coming. And, you know, let's just ask that nothing else is found on the PET scan. That is my hope. That is what I am willing for Ray right now. There's strength in numbers, power in numbers, and that's what we need right now. 
And so I promise I will most definitely keep you updated on the results and uh, what the treatment plan is and how Ray is doing. And so again, thank you all for tuning in. Keep watching my content because it's helping to give me the time off that I need to help Ray through this journey. Until next time, everybody, stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, because I sure as heck am trying. Bye for now, everybody.